four minutes and people kind of filter back in. And then we'll get started. If you start early, you all can leave. Don't forget to get your parking validated and um, give us back the video release form. Yeah, in the back. said the earlier we start the earlier you all can head home. I know some of you have a long drive. So what we're going to spend, the morning was um, I know a lot of us sort of talking at you and just, just listening to us talk and explain things and the afternoon is going to be a lot more interactive and so I'm hoping that, that you find that valuable. Um, I'm going to quickly go over the um, th three short instruments and then Michelle is going to take over and talk about the observational protocol which is the um, the main um, tool and, or instrument you'll be using to observe the sanitariums. Um, and then we're going to view an inspection and actually try out the observational protocol. And then we'll do some discussions and debrief it. Um, and then we'll, we'll do some role playing. You'll, you'll get in partners and then we'll just wrap it up at the end. So hopefully the afternoon is, is a little bit more um, lively. Um, I wanted to just mention before I talk about the instruments that I spoke in the morning about DOLF meetings and RAPI meetings and we wanted to just reiterate that you're all more than welcome to participate. The DOLF meetings are on um, the fourth Tuesday of every month in the afternoon at the conference call um, and they're really meant to be a support to you and to the site coordinators um, and, and not a burden. So you know. It, we don't want you to view it as just another meeting I have to sit through. Really bring to the table what it is you're seeing in the field and what issues you're having or what successes you're having and we can talk about it. Um, and then you're more than welcome to, to participate in the overall wrapping meetings. Um, those are the first Tuesday of the month. We have one tomorrow afternoon. Um, and we talk with our constituents from across the state, um, including the Ohio Department of Health and the Ohio Public Health Partnership um, and some local health departments about our various projects. So it's not all about the DOLF project. We talk about numerous other projects going on, but this is certainly one of them and, and you might find value or want to participate in some of those as well. Okay, so I'm going to just open up about the DOLF instruments. Um, and in your folders you have these instruments. So um, I'm not going to go through them, you know, piece by piece, but uh, the first one you'll see after the page of acronyms is the local health department profile. Now, this is something that we will be filling out. The health departments themselves won't be filling these forms out. Um, it's all publicly available data, so it's, you know we're not using anything that's confidential or, or anything that you couldn't find on your own. We'll be using the census, um, NEO can do, and then annual financial report data, AFR data. Um, now, I should say that here in the local health department profile that you have in front of you, we have LHD demographics, jurisdictional social demographics, and then we go into personnel and funding. Um, we're actually going to pull out the jurisdictional demographics and have that be a separate page just for our own, our own clarity and sort of separate that out, um, but it'll be the exact same, exact same items. Um, so we just go through the local health department demographics, so population size served percentage of jurisdiction that is rural, urban, suburban, or first ring suburb, which is um, a suburb bordering a large city. Um, is it a county, a city, or a combined? Um, or does the health department cover multiple counties? And then I'm going to skip the jurisdictional stuff and I'll go over that on the next slide. But um, And then we go into personnel. So how many full-time equivalents are in the LHG total? Um, how many are epidemiologists, how many are environmental health workers, and then we want to get at um, the number of food service specialist sanitarians. So that's defined as those whose 90% or more of their work time is devoted to food service inspections. Um, as Dr. Frank mentioned, in some smaller local health departments, it's not going to be that way. There's going to be one sanitarian covering all of the environmental health um, tasks, and so you know they would not have a 90% or more of time, but larger health departments will. Um, we also ask, um, are going to fill in about funding, so 
what are their sources of funding and how have their budgets um, worked out for the last four years. Um, and then we're going to get into how many uh, foodborne outbreaks has the LHD formally investigated, um, how many of these investigations were documented foodborne outbreaks, um, and then same thing for two years previously. Um, we're going to get out a little bit um, records, um, how are inspection records kept, is it electronic copy, is it hard copy, is it both? Um, do the all, do, do their all hazards emergency plan have a food brain, foodborne outbreak inspection? And then just at some of the other services that LHD offers, so um, enforcement of clean air law, the vector borne program, and full service immunization. So again, the jurisdictional profile, which is when we originally did this, it was part of the LHD profile, but we're going to just draw that out. Um, Again, this is the well. This is the population size served: urban, rural, suburban. And then for the ju the social demographics, we're going to get at the the age of the individuals living in that jurisdiction, gender, race, and then um, poverty rate, percentage of female-headed households, and then percentage served by Medicaid. Okay. So then, the other thing is the um, re registered sanitarian profile. Um, this will be filled out by the registered sanitarian themselves. Um, we won't, um, it's not an interview, so you won't be asking them these questions. They'll fill it out on their own. Um, and it, it will be confidential. Um, obviously not anonymous, but it will be confidential. So we ask about social demographics, um, previous work experience. We want to get it, um, is this a sanitarian who's been in the field for 30 years, or is this someone who's been in the field for six months? Um, what are their current job responsibilities to get an idea of what all they're balancing? Are they fully devoted to food service inspections or are they juggling multiple uh, demands at the local health department? Um, and then we get at what are their experiences with foodborne outbreaks? Um, and you can see we ask a number of questions um, about that. How often have you been involved in suspected foodborne outbreak investigation? And again, this just really gets at what is their expertise. Um, and then just general experiences as a registered sanitarian. So we ask, um, you know, which aspects of food service establishment inspections do you enjoy? And they can, they can rate it. And then um, how are their relationships with the people in charge, the PICs? That kind of thing, just trying to get at sort of what their attitudes and feelings are about food service um, establishment inspections and their job as a registered sanitarian as a whole. Um, so I think this is where Michelle is going to take over. Um, if you have any questions about these documents, please let me know. Um, again, the local health department profile and the jurisdictional profile, we will be filling out that information all with publicly available data. So it won't be something you'll be responsible for. And, um, and then the registered sanitarian profile will be something they'll fill out on their own independently. So I will hand it over to Michelle to talk about the observational protocol. Okay, so now we're going to talk about, I guess, the three main um, instruments that you will be using on a regular basis every time you do an inspection. Um, Aporva and I started back in May, and from that point, pretty much, we started um, in the ground with our job as graduate assistants in developing this observational protocol, as well as the pre- and post-inspection um, documents that you will see as well. Um, and we pulled from a lot of sources, and I'll, as we go through it, I'll point out where we've taken the different um, questions. But I just wanted to preview that and say this has been a really big work in process that we've been, um, this protocol we've been developing for, for a long time now. And we've had a chance to pilot it and so very, very proud of it. So, um, but first let's start off connecting with your registered sanitarian. So location. Um, when we, when Aporva and I went and piloted the observational protocol, we met at the Cuyahoga County Board of Health and from there we drove out with our sanitarians. This may be the case for you, for those of you who can um, get out to your local health departments, but you can also um, have a situation where you just meet them at the um, food service establishment. Um, however, for the first couple of times, I'd probably recommend that you really try and e you know get in contact with them, whether it be through email or however they end up setting it up, 
and you meet at the local health department just to kind of get your, you know, grounded. There, that way also you can get an introduction before they're just trying to get into their work and doing the actual inspection. Um, so, yeah, introductions, you know, when you meet them, um, it'll, you know, you'll probably hopefully have a few minutes to just exchange, you know, backgrounds, um, get to know them, and review the plan for the session. They'll tell you, okay, we're going to hit three different um, inspections, it'll be a grocery store, you know, they'll just lay it out for you. Um, and that's where you can get a good idea of, you know, how long it's going to take. Um, a porter and I got to see about four to five um, different establishments each. He had a lot of restaurants which took significantly longer than mine. Like my first one was a gas station, which was, you know, 25 minutes. So as you do more inspections, you'll learn whether, you know, it's going to be a, a, you know, a nice quick gas station versus a grocery store, which I heard could take up to like between two, maybe even more hours, which is pretty extensive. Um, and then I already covered the transportation, so you'll discuss how that works. And it is easier in terms of if you're not familiar with a certain area, wherever you'll be doing the inspections to go with them as well, uh, just to have go in the car with them as, as long as they're, um, they're okay with that. And so I guess this brings us to the pre-inspection interview, which hopefully um, the best place we found to conduct it is during the travel time when possible. Um, it'll be a chance when you're in the car and instead of those awkward silences, now you have this, into this little um, one-page document to build in. Um, and actually, I'll have you just turn to it now so you can just see what it is on in your little um, folders here. Don't have a page, but it should be after the registered sanitarian profile. Um, and you should see yeah, it's entitled pre-inspection um, interview. So this is a nice, short, quick thing that you can do with them. And you definitely want to make sure you do it before you go into the establishments. You don't want to be doing this in front of the person in charge or the food service establishment employees because as you'll see, there's some questions that they might not, you might not want them to hear the answers to. Um, and these will be conducted for each inspection. So even if you um, it just say you go to four different places, you need to fill out four different forms um, corresponding to each individual um, inspection that you go to. And these are administered by interview. So you don't give these sheets to them, you fill it out and ask them the questions. So I guess this is the opportunity where we're going to walk through. I really want to make sure you guys um, understand what each questions are asking and definitely please feel free to interrupt me and ask questions if you're not sure about what a question is asking because we want to make sure you understand everything um, fully. So sanitarian ID that will be provided, these are going to be assigned to them and you should have these um, ahead of time I believe. Um, but so, do you expect this to be a typical inspection? So, for, most, for the most part, you'll have, um, I guess, routine inspections. That's generally what they have. But, for example, when Apoorva and I went out, we were just planning on doing normal, unannounced inspections, but it, we ended up um, going the day after a power um, shortage. Um, and a lot of restaurants, the lights were off, but yet their doors were still open. And so that kind of created a very interesting dynamic because the sanitarian I was following kept making calls to various um, to back to the local health department and to other sanitarians saying, hey, your restaurant is, you know, the lights are off, but their doors are still open, you know, and things got rearranged accordingly. But so um, that's basically, you know, they um, hopefully will be able to answer that. It's pretty, whether it's going to be unannounced or whether it's something that they're expecting might have more complications to it per se, so a complaint or um, something that they might be otherwise not expecting. Um, and so have you re uh, reviewed the previous inspection report? Um, a lot of times, the, at least the sanitarians I shadowed, the one I shadowed has, I think, 30 plus years. And so the restaurants we were all going to, he's done, he's inspected many times before. And the previous reports he had filled out. Um, but so since he knows the restaurant so well, uh, he didn't, for example, he didn't um, review the reports. But if it's a new place, oftentimes the registered sanitarians will look at um, the report see um, what complaints or violations were reported in order to address them or just pay special attention to those issues. Um, and then do you have any special concerns about this in inspection? Uh, when I asked this question um, to my registered sanitarian, he's, he'd seen pretty much everything and so for him it was just, you know, he, he's not new at it and so for him to get him like um, concerned about a, um, an establishment really has to be pretty significant. So. Um, but we, in this uh, question, we give you the opportunity to write what, you know, we really want qualitative responses, not just yes or no. Um, but if they just say no, that's more than fine as well, because that's what I got for most of them as well. So 
Next question, is this a heart sink FSE? So we've defined heart sink as establishments that you dread inspecting. So your heart sinks when you think about having to go in and deal with the owner or the conditions of the restaurant or where the establishment. Um, and uh, so that's what we have, and, and also we have the definitions included so in, in, the, in case you need reference. Um, and then uh, pretty standard, have you inspected this establishment before? And um, if yes, is your history with them positive, neutral, negative, or don't remember? Um, so pretty straightforward questions. Hopefully we found these to be pretty easy when asking them to our sanitarians. Um, any questions? I'm going to stop quite often and just make sure everything's good. Okay. So um, travel time. This is your time from your last destination to this destination. So if it's from your local health department to the first place, to the first um, establishment being inspected, that's the time just hopefully, you know, wear a watch or your phone or something to be able to record this. Um, or if you're at your first, uh, after you leave your first inspection to um, your second place, that would be for on your second um, inspection interview um, date. Um, and then inspection time. So um, this is really the moment the F the, your um, sanitarian enters the door. So right when you open, what, right when you go in, that's when you put the, your, your mark the time. Um, and then, okay, so I've mentioned the types of inspection. So we really try to do a good job of labeling everything that you could possibly um, come across. Routine inspections are the most probable that you'll be seeing, but there are follow-ups. So if, there was a, if they inspected something and they need to come back to check something, um, that would be considered a follow-up. 30-day or new establishment. Um, hopefully when you talk to the sanitarian, they should give you a brief, oh, we're just going to do you know, three routine inspections, or if it's a complaint as the next, as number five, they should hopefully say that. And it's okay at that point to also ask them, you know, because they should know what these are and they can be able to direct you. Um, and then other, if it's something that we haven't experienced, but that should be pretty rare because from what we, what we saw, those were pretty much the main types. Um, and then scheduled versus unannounced. All inspections, even the routine, are unannounced. So in general, if they just say it's a routine inspection, you can pretty much um, guess that it's an unannounced. Um, and, but once again, this is you'll be interacting with the sanitarian, so you can feel free to ask them these questions. Um, oh, and then just last thing on the bottom, um, information collected prior to observation. So it's just the, it asks for the address of the food service establishment. So um, if you have the name of it, um, you know, Google it or just look it up and then fill that in. Um, yes. Let me just uh, mention one thing. It may be self-evident, but the presumption is that most of the time you'll be driving, you'll drive to the site and then drive with the sanitarium uh, for the inspections. But you'll actually have your choice and actually have to talk to the sanitarium about it too. They may prefer that you follow them in your car, um, uh, may prefer that you drive with them. Uh, they'll be individually ne negotiated between you and the sanitarium. Um, let's see, yeah. So this wraps up the pre-inspection interview. You guys are going to have um, a chance to work with this and we're going to give you some scenarios later on. Um, but this is, um, I guess, my over, um, overview of the interview. So any questions on the pre-inspection? Yes? You specifically not want the name of the establishment that's being inspected on here? Because you're just going to be address. Yes. Um, I mean, it's just we're not trying to identify them. We don't, um, we don't want the confidential information, but just um, for future mapping, and um, we'd like to have the location. Okay, so now we're moving on to the big um, observational protocol. Yes? Uh, I'm sorry, just to clarify on mapping, we won't map the exact address, but we'll map the census tract that okay. uh, identifies the restaurant that the sanitarium is going to be inspecting. So we'll have a sense of uh, how that census tract compares to others uh, in terms of inspections. Uh, so the uh, food service establishment won't be outed by having that address. Uh, it'll just allow us to put it uh, in its approximate geographic position. So this, okay, the observational protocol will become your best friend. Um, it is something that uh, four pages long and covers what we hope to be a pretty comprehensive view of what we're hoping to find with this study. Um, most of it, we hope that it'll just be something you can observe. All the questions, I'd say you know, over 97% are just 
what you should be able to observe, not talk to the sanitarian. You want to you want to remind them also that if they are talking to you and explaining things to you, as our as a porva and our uh, my sanitarian were, that you are a researcher. This is not you're not a student trying to learn about the pro, uh, about what they're doing. You really just want to be in the background and just seeing what they do as it would be if you weren't there. Um, but that being said. There are a few questions when Rapport and I observed um, that we found that it's, you won't know unless you ask them. Um, so the first one being risk category. Um, so there's four risk cat four levels. Um, first and second are the most minimal. First one, um, the, uh, the risk possesses, um, possesses potential risk to the public in terms of sanitation, food labeling, sources of food, storage practices, or expect expiration dates. Um, second is just slightly higher risk because of hand contact or employee health concerns. Um, and I've also included the source so you can go into the Ohio code book for what they consider um, the different risk categories. Um, but the m big ones that are at least that have a lot more details with them are three and four. And so you can see it poses higher risk because of proper cooking temperatures, um, holding temperatures and contamination issues. And um, level four is the highest, um, being you know that they have reheating products um, that are being left outside. And um, just like an, uh, I guess a note that you can't assume that, for example, you think of fast food. Well, hey, that would probably be a high risk category. But in fact, actually, as I learned when I was on um, uh, when I was uh, following the sanitarians, for example, McDonald's is a number three, while Wendy's is four because they leave their chili out all day in a big vat and they just scoop from it. So that's a constant. Um, holding time, whereas Wendy's, um, McDonald's doesn't have that. So this is an area where you really won't know, um, but that the sanitarian should pretty much know off the bat, and if not, it'll be um, on what they're recording. So this is a situation where um, try and find a time. We, I, I don't know the best time to suggest to you when to ask Dr. Frank because, you know, it, it kind of, for us, when we were shadowing, we had more of a conversation. It wasn't the situation that we expect you guys to have? Yeah, we, we actually may add that to the pre session. Uh, it seems like it would fit there. Uh, otherwise, we would forget to ask and we wouldn't be uh, asking questions during the inspection, uh, which we're going to try to avoid doing. Yes, I, I fully agree. Okay, so more establishment characteristics. Seating capacity. When you walk in, you should be able to pretty much gauge, you know, how many seats um, are in the place. Whether there's no seating or it's takeout, um, just try and do a quick count. Um, pretty straightforward. Then the establishment being expected, uh, inspected. So whether it's a national franchise or a local franchise fast food, um, just circle um, one choice. Um, so pretty straightforward. And then the person in charge demographics. So that's going to be the person who um, the, the sanitarian, you know, initially says, "Hi, I'm here to do an inspection," and is their main point of contact. So, a, a gender, approximate age, um, is the PIC the manager or the owner? Um, that can be a little bit tricky to tell. Um, it was easier for me because I got to ask, um, but if you know, just see, don't know is an option there because you, we really don't want you asking. But if you can observe it, then um, that would be great. And then also um, the PIC facility with speaking the English language um, and also understanding because there can be communication issues which create conflict or um, additional issues. So we'd like to know about that as well. Um, any questions on the first two sections? Okay. So now one of the biggest things we want to see is the interaction between the registered sanitarian and the person in charge. So these interactions will generally occur in the few, first few minutes, so it's including whether the sanitarian addresses the food service operator by first name, last name, doesn't address at all, um, whether they shake hands, and uh, whether the sanitarian washes their hands. Generally, it's a good practice to do so, um, although when I was shadowing my sanitarian and I commented that that was on the list, he made an extra effort to wash his hands um, and commented that he wouldn't otherwise do so. So that's just something to say. I said it, and so um, our results for that were a little bit skewed because he was trying to set a good example there. But, um, and then, however, um, we also include um, items such as does the sanitarian interact or talk with the person in charge or also the employees and the patrons. So this may occur in the first you know, few minutes of walking the door, but, but it might not. So one of the things I'd recommend is you know, as you get exposure to the observational protocol, you'll be able to understand where things you know, fall within um, within the pages so that you'll be able to um, recognize it and go back because 
you know, as the, um, int as the um, inspection goes on, you'll be on second, third page marking things, but we want to make sure that you don't just miss that, um, but so just keep that in mind. Um, and then also the check-in time. So how much time does the sanitarian speak in discussion with the person in charge in preparation for the inspection? So that's when they come in and just, you know, have the informal, hi, I'm going to go do the annual inspection, um, and just, you know, hopefully you have a watcher phone that you can just time that. Um, and, but that also may not occur, because I've had times where um, my sanitarian just went in, the owner wasn't available, but he just started going through. So that doesn't necessarily have to occur. Okay, so the content section, um, this was adapted um, from, Dr. Frank mentioned earlier, the um, primary care um, study that was done, which a lot of, um, which the direct observation methodology was pulled from. So the following content section, um, these questions have been adapted from there. And, um, instead of doctor, you see sanitarian and um, registered uh, person in charge. So these, um, these questions will be during the interaction. So um, I guess, let's see, we'll probably go through and just make sure you understand each point. And we also tried our best to do um, in italicized below the um, items, little descriptors just to kind of um, make sure you know um, what we're asking. So, you know, admitting uncertainty. Um, whether, you know, either for either side. And we also have once or more than once. So on additional, well, I'll show you um, further on, we can, there's a line where you can do tick marks to keep how many times things happen. So um, I suggest that, you know, you might see it happen, then you circle once, and then it happens further along, and you don't want to be erasing. So maybe just make a little tick mark if it happens once, but, um, but then if it happens again, you can circle more than once, but just to keep, you know, for your ease of being able to see what, um, what you circled. Um, Let me just comment on that. If you circle once, you have more than once, we'll take the response to be more than once. So it's okay. fine if you just circle once, and then if you see it, you have to go back and circle more than once. Yep. This is kind of maybe a bit too nitty gritty, but um, on the washing hands, mm -hmm. I can under, I mean, I can imagine someone not necessarily washing hands, but using hand sanitizer before or during. Like, where do you want that to? Um, sorry, I couldn't oh. the Using, um, what, if, what if they use hand sanitizer instead of hand washing? I would consider that washing. Yeah. Um, yeah, good question because that's definitely, um, that's easier to do than going to one of their sinks and washing right. your hands because that's the kind of awkward part of it. Um, but, okay, so then let's see, just moving along through these items, so whether humor is used, um, as you'll see, the video um, that you'll observe later, um, the sanitarian was the one I shouted. So hopefully, I haven't seen the video, but you'll, I think you'll see how funny he is. He really tried to lighten the mood, and he's been doing it so long that his way of attacking it is really not coming into it as a hard, you know. No restaurant owner really wants the sanitarian coming with their little, you know, magnifying glass and pencil looking through their establishment for problems. So um, one of the biggest things that my sanitarian used was humor. So you might see that as a mechanism. Um, also interruptions. This is something that will definitely, I think, take some time um, to notice because it really involves you listening very closely because interrupts, sometimes you don't, at least my first couple um, uh, inspections that I shadowed, I didn't really click on it and I really had to make sure I was listening because the going back and forth between the two, um, talking, sometimes you don't catch it, So, but it'll come with practice. Um, and then um, when the sanitarian uses unexplained jargon, um, that it's a little bit more difficult to define, but if you see the sanitarian looking, or the person in charge looking puzzled, um, or just a word even that you might be kind of, you know, questioned on. Um, um, oh, and also just to go back, so we really have tried to arrange these questions sequentially and how, when we shadowed, how it kind of played out, but keep in mind that they might, you might be going back and forth and definitely when um, you go on the observations, the clipboard's very helpful and not having the pages stapled, obviously, so you can just be flipping back and forth because these may, I did a lot of it. So um, just, you know, once you understand, you know, look through the observational form and you'll get experience exposure using it today. Um, hopefully you'll be able to, you know, keep in mind where things fall because things will be happening quickly and if, you know, the sanitarian's really, you know, who knows what they're doing is really going through the place you're going to be, you know, going, you want to know where things are so that it's as fluid for you as possible. Um, but so, okay, so I've talked a little bit about this, but now argumentation. So conflict, that's pretty easy to judge. Um, you'll see whether voices are raised, et cetera. 
Um, and then, so items like this, the sanitarian giving positive feedback to the food service, positive or negative feedback. That's something that, you know, generally if the person in charge isn't accompanying the registered sanitarian throughout the inspection, you might not see that until the end. So that's just another thing to keep in mind where it's in the content section, but it might not occur till later. So um, just don't go through and say not at all when you haven't completed the full um, inspection yet. Um, also, does the sanitarian threaten punitive action? So if they, you know, if you don't comply, then I'm gonna, you know, close down your restaurant, something like that. Um, would be included here. And um, let's see. Also, again, with discussing the results, this next question, um, generally this is going to occur at the end of it. So um, just keep in mind with flipping back and forth that you don't miss this question, um, that you don't miss these. Um, we also included a question on where favors, food items, gift cards, coupons offered to the sanitarian, because believe it or not, even when I was on um, a food inspection, we were consistently offered um, food or drink at this one place, and that's not really shouldn't do that, but um, you know, we also you know we ask if the sanitarian does accept because you know, hey, some of them some of them might. So um, that's what I mean when I say <coughs> I, I uh, wouldn't suggest you use the word bribes no. if you're uh, talking to your sanitarian. And I, I don't think that's really the intent of the food service operators when they offer. I, you mm -hmm. know, I don't think that they really believe that offering a soft drink would keep somebody from citing, uh, but we're attempting to establish a relationship. The fact is, though, that the sanitarian shouldn't be accepting those offers because of the appearance of impropriety. Uh, uh, so we do want to get a sense both of how often it's offered and how consistently the sanitarians find that. Um, so, any questions on this section? Um, the questions, the wording. I, I can hear what. I said, if the sanitarian offered a glass of water. So, if there are any other questions, we're going to move on to the physical inspection component. Um, this part, uh, we really hit, uh, there's definitely a mind reading issue because from what we found when we're shadowing the sanitarian, when they, especially the experienced ones, when they walk into the room, like the first room that they see, um, according to my sanitarian, his eyes go everywhere. I mean, he looks floor, wall, ceiling, um, and I had no clue. I mean, I, you know, I'm not staring at his eyes, so I wasn't aware, um, you know, what he was definitely looking at. But in this section, as you'll see, we have a bunch of different items. Cu uh, cupboards, countertops, sink, preparation area, um, cooking area, areas that you might not know they're observing, but we want, you know, to the best of your ability, if they walk over to a sink and, you know, turn on the tap, you know, definitely um, put a little tick mark. And we have this line here to, um, so that you can mark because there, depending on the establishment, there might be a variety of rooms that you go through and this just will help you keep count. And then at the end of the, um, um, observation, just make sure to total how many um, times you saw the particular action being done. Um, but so going through these um, preparation area, that's a lot in the kitchen where they're, you know, doing a lot of the prep work, um, with, you know, cutting up the food, um, cooking area, stove and oven, um, trash, um, the water temperatures. Um, I saw my saying, he'd turn on the water, put his finger under to see if it got hot um, and cold, did that for actually nearly every sink. Um, labels on food items. Um, I went to a Greek uh, market and we went through the aisles and he took cans off the shelves multiple times. Um, so that's an example of that. Uh, equipment check. We also went into the fr um, at the gas station. Uh, you know where you get the bottles of soda and those cool containers. You can actually it's really cool. So you have, you can pull a section of it to the side and you can go behind it where they do all the loading. Um, which is a really cold room. So that might be another thing. Bring a sweater. Um, but they have thermometers in there and they will bring their own um, scanners as well um, that they can check the temperature with, but that's an example um, of that. Um, stuff like squats or bend overs, looks under items, hopefully that should be pretty easy to observe. Um, Uses a ladder um, and then checking the temperature of food um, and, and menu as well. So uh, like we said, we understand that mind reading is definitely going to be an issue because you might not catch all the times that the, that the sanitarian does this, but just try and um, 
uh, you know, try and be consistent. And also, uh, another note to mention is that this protocol is constantly being improved. So um, please feel free. We, there's a section in the back called Field Notes. So if you notice something that is constantly your sanitarian is looking at that isn't on this list, please write it down. And then um, when you have your meetings at your schools um, and then the statewide golf meetings, please make sure to um, alert us of that and we will make sure to put it on this because if there's something important we're missing, we definitely want to know. Um, let's see. Okay, so that's the little, yeah. Just a quick question about the equipment check, like refrigerators, you know, if they have four at the establishment, all four have thermometers, mm -hmm. do you want us to say like they check four out of four? If, if, if they do. If they do, if they check, if they go and check each individual one, because yeah, there might be four, and he might just check one and say, okay, I'm going to assume the rest are fine. But so for each time he looks at a thermometer or. But so he wants to annotate, like yeah, they looked at two and there were only two, so they did 100 percent. Or do you just want a total number? It just. Um, it'd be great to do it out of and will yes, yeah, so and yeah. then remind people. And that's, from that. that's the kind of comments that we love to get and. Uh, questions on the physical inspection? So, okay. Um, actually, in, in continuation, um, this next section, page three, I believe, um, was adapted from a food inspection checklist that sanitarians use. Um, I don't believe it's from all eyes, but um, this gave us a pretty comprehensive overview of what sanitarians should be looking for. Um, so, I know it's a lot, but we're just going to go step by step making sure you understand each of them. So, lighting of the restaurant. Um, Although for these we changed up the questions a little bit and the responses are either apparently, comment made, or no or not explicitly. So, you know, for lighting, it's one of those things where you just might not know. But if there's a comment made, then, you know, please um, check appropriately. Um, equipment check. Um, I know we have it on the other page, but so this is just another example where we're specifically looking at the refrigeration aspect. Um, thermometer calibration. Um, food protection, so is the food stored, prepared, displayed in a manner that um, adequately protects it from contamination. So if, um, you know, if there's food being stored in um, wherever you're inspecting and the sanitarium goes over to look at it, this would be a situation where you could um, check this area. Food holding time, so whether it's sitting in a container out um, where it's being served or whether it's in the back, if, they look, if they're looking to that issue, this would be an area where you can check this. Um, sanitation, so temperature concentration of the sanitizing rinse solutions. Um, this is not something I would have known, but believe it or not, um, my sanitarian saw this jug of just this yellow liquid and acid sandwich, and it had no labeling on it, and he uh, made sure to tell the person in charge, like, what is this? And he was like, oh, this is this cleaning solution. And once he found out that that's what it was and it wasn't labeled, he, it opened up this whole wall of questions. So this is an important area. Um, um, as well, and then going along with cleanliness, so the hand washing facilities that are available, um, cleanliness of clothes. Um, these are in areas, for example, I didn't, I didn't necessarily see where they commented on the cleanliness of clothes, uh, but it might be evident in the people working um, there. And then, let's see, date marking. So this goes along with the labels on foods. When my sanitarian was looking at cans, um, they, he specifically told me, you know, he was checking for dates and that the containers were sealed appropriately. Um, Hopefully you don't see this, but presence of vermin or vermin excrement, um, it definitely happens. So, and this might, you know, the sanitarians will definitely make a comment about this if they see it. Um, use of disposable gloves goes under the cross-contamination control methods. Um, and, you know, whether the people prepping the food are using um, gloves or not, and uh, um, disposal of waste as well. Um, let's see, cleaning solutions, again, in their, in their original containers. And then, okay, restrooms was actually a very interesting um, area. For example, I learned that women's restrooms, the, um, they're, for example, the trash lids in the men's restroom aren't required to have a lid on them, but the women's, for example, are because of sanitary um, issues. And so he specifically went in and checked for that. Um, so that is, for example, why we have, you know, do trash cans in women's restroom have lids? Um, 
and as one of the questions. Um, also, you know, just doing the overall check for trash cans overflowing, hand soap present, um, paper towels available. Um, and, uh, and so yeah, that's pretty so straightforward as well. Um, and then, okay, so during the, um, during the inspection, we also asked for two questions whether tobacco came up, so. Uh, let me stop you right there for just a second and just uh, uh, give some advice on how to build this portion of the uh, questionnaire now. Again, like uh, previously, if you circle currently at one point and then comment made later, comment made will come. Uh, apparently, if that's what would be reported or if you have both no and comment made, uh, the presumption would be that uh, uh, you thought it was no, but later they made a comment. Um, Generally speaking, I would advise you not to circle no or explicitly until the end of the visit when you're reviewing your form. And at that point, anything that wasn't explicitly done, go ahead and uh, uh, circle that. Um, uh, but um, <clears throat> many of these things you may not know they've done until the checkout. And at the checkout, they may comment on uh, the presence of uh, a vermin because they're not supposed to be talking to you about it anyway. They may not be able to resist saying, or you may see them see, um, uh, you know, excrement. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, then uh, it, you know you make uh, it clear that uh, uh, it was noticed. On the other hand, if you see them see it, I would circle apparently, because if they don't make a comment about it, they still haven't really done their job, um, because they should be commenting on excrement. Um, uh, but on the other hand, um, uh, for example, if they go into the woman's restroom, they may not, probably won't comment about whether there are lids on the women's trash can. But if they looked in the women's restroom, uh, I would probably uh, circle, apparently, uh, that they've checked for, uh, that they have noticed whether or not there are lids on the, uh, on the trash can. Whether they comment on it later will be an thing. Uh, they've been in there, but make no comment about that because they're supposed to. That would be um, variation. Uh, uh, so that's the way I would approach this. Uh, I would um, I, uh, start by um, circling during the inspection anything that is apparent or if they make a comment at the time, as Michelle mentioned, for a PIC um, a sanitarian making a comment as he was looking at something to a PIC. Absolutely. Just circle comment made right there, and uh, uh, that often takes care of it. Um, uh, but uh, I wouldn't uh, circle no until uh, going back through and reviewing your form. And we would recommend after each visit, after the post inspect inspection interview, you go through your form, review it. Anything that you haven't checked off, you have an opportunity to do. Uh, if you um, for example, uh, didn't check off uh, use its humor, but now remember that, uh, uh, that they did make the PIC laugh, and that's the question. Not whether you think they're funny, but they did make the PIC laugh. Um, uh, and then, uh, you know, sort of look at the time that you recognize that omission uh, on your own part. Um, uh, you know, the more often you do this, the easier that will become to notice and recall uh, those kinds of things that occur during the session. Uh, uh, the one thing that uh, we are not doing um, is recording either by audio or video uh, what goes on in, uh, in these sessions. Uh, uh, that would be more intrusive, particularly to the food service establishment, uh, and uh, that won't be part of what we're doing. Uh, yes? Is this answer just the uh, so that's a, a good question and um, uh, one that um, uh, I'll respond to in this way. Um, we do not forbid the sanitarians from seeing this form. Uh, it absolutely is true that there could be observational bias uh, that they may be taken differently because they know they're being observed. Um, I'm going to go back, however, to the medical setting and say the physicians always knew that they were being observed. They knew what they were being observed for and still um, uh, didn't um, perform at a standard that you might think that they would. Uh, in other words, uh, they knew they were being, um, uh, that 
uh, the observers were looking for, whether they uh, were involved with any preventive procedures, whether they washed their hands during the visit, and still they didn't wash their hands or didn't bring up preventive issues. Uh, so uh, even if they know they're being observed, uh, what we can say is this is what we're seeing on best behavior, and best behavior even may not rise to level. And if, in fact, uh, they are all our best behavior and are all doing a great job, we have to acknowledge uh, that um, this may not be entirely generalizable because of observation bias, uh, but look at how well they did. Uh, so either way, we'll acknowledge that as a limitation of the approach, uh, but uh, the experience not just in the medical setting, but in other settings as well, um, lead us to understand that people forget that they're more likely to fall back on usual practice than they are to change everything they do every time they do it when viewed over a long period of time. If you were just watching them once, that may be more of an issue, but the fact that you know, you're know you going to be there weekly for a long period of time, on average, what you'll be getting will be close to what usual practice is to them. Does that answer that question? Yes. Um, if the sanitarium comes in to the establishment and they're taking all of their, their notes on a form and their comments are written, say for example the person in charge is the manager or an owner, it's just the, whoever's the, the head of the office at that point in time, um, for like example the trash cans and the one that's rushing past legs, we circle apparently because we know that they looked at it, but if they make a comment on the the notation that they don't, we don't hear them say, they don't say to the person in charge, it's not a manager, should we, will we be able to see their comment cards before they? Uh, the plan is um, for uh, you to have access to um, uh, the uh, whatever written information they give to uh, the restaurant. That information is public information, so it shouldn't be restricted from us in any way. When it's public information, I believe that there has to be a written request for that information, and therefore we may need to uh, talk with uh, each of the health departments and ask whether they need us to give a written request for each, or whether there could be a blanket request. Um, uh, and some health departments may feel one way about it, and some feel another way about it. Uh, the plan is to match the written record of that visit with your um, uh, observation form. Um, uh, and uh, I would say that yes, if something is on the form but uh, not explicitly stated, it still uh, shows that the uh, sanitarian paid attention to it. They just felt that it didn't rise to the level of priority that they needed to make a verbal comment on it since there was a written record of it for the uh, PSC to see. Okay? Yes? Um, Dupin, can you explain the food holding time a little more? I, I'm sorry, let me just get closure on yeah. um, Camille's question. Um, uh, so, my advice would be to reconcile at the end of the day, probably not in between. At the end of the visit, after you've done your post inspection interview, uh, work to the best of your memory about what happened, and then at the end of your session for the day, reconcile uh, the written copy with your uh, observational form, and then particularly with the ground things that, um, that the sanitarian has explicitly noted that you wouldn't have been able to tell that they noted based on your observation. The sanitarians, like for example, food, I mean hairnets, they don't, um, or at least a poor road, correct? Because I, I, didn't, I didn't observe any and they were. Unless the sanitarian asks you to do certain things, such as, I mean, usually the sanitarian will wash his hands. And that is actually to spread a message to the people watching, such as food workers or, and the manager also, that they should wash their hands during the visit. But as uh, uh, Michelle mentioned, uh, not every sanitarian will do it. Uh, however, if the designer asks you to do it, please do it. Otherwise, for the most part, uh, if you're dressed professionally and uh, uh, you just observe the 
definitely an HPC and then certain level of professionals as well. Um, attire will be important to them. They're required to have a certain level of attire, and if uh, you're with them, you are viewed as an ambassador and extension of the health department, uh, so uh, uh, you need to dress um, uh, not in any fancy kind of way, but uh, uh, you know, specifically, uh, you know, jeans uh, uh, and uh, uh, shoes and things. I think we'll go through a little bit more detail uh, later. Um, and they may even hand you a dress code. Um, uh, if they do, then follow that dress code. Uh, Judy, did you have a question? Yeah, um, I wonder if you could explain that food holding time. And is that something that you also with, uh, like, going back to the women's restroom listings, like, not every establishment will have a women's and men's restroom. So is there, did I just put, like, not available or, you know, like, not applicable, whatever? See, in that case, even if it's a restroom that's unisex where women would be using it, they right, are it's still technically to have the just yeah as a right. and and also when we you know the trash the trash cans I'm not talking about the ones you know in the corner with the paper towels like for girls who know like the ones in like the restroom like the restroom right. stalls um, but so hopefully that should be the case if a woman is using the restroom there that that kind of trash can should be provided uh -huh. um, but I can understand that issue because I, I one of the bars we were at was a had a really disgusting bathroom um, um, that didn't have any trash can whatsoever. And, um, and <laughs> if, if I could just add to that, um, uh, feel free to make any qualitative note you want to make on um, the form anywhere at any time. So, you know, underneath the uh, uh, do uh, trash can and women's uh, restroom have lids, uh, just handwrite unisex on Mm -hmm. We'll find a way to do that. And if we're seeing that often enough, we'll add it to the form so you can just check it off later. Uh, if it's not occurring any more often than a couple of times, then it just uh, gives you one more complication uh, that everybody needs to check off when it gets too rare to warrant that. Uh, but write on the form, and we'll be monitoring those to, to see whether there's a, a need to change the questionnaire based on those comments. Uh, I can tell you already as we've gone through, I've been making notes for several minor changes, but that should just make your job easier. Um, I, and uh, those will be made uh, before we go out. Uh, uh, you'll take a look at the new forms before you go out as well. And, you know, we should have um, said this at the beginning, but feel free to take notes on your documents in your folder. When we do um, uh, sort of practice, observational thing, we have other forms. This is, these are all for you to keep. Right, and uh, these will also be available electronically, and uh, the final form will look different than this in terms of uh, uh, how we set it up to make it easier for us to input the data and to do that. And just to ask you a question on the holding thing, um, every uh, food service prepared part uh, I mean, for example, let's say it's um, uh, studio or something like that. Uh, I don't remember the exact, maybe it's exact, right? but I think it's around, uh, it has to be boiled to around 165 uh, back then or something like that. And uh, so there are certain numbers which we have to share with you, and you can just go with it also holding, uh, food holding time, so you can get it. Um, so what happens is that when stuff is, and, and stuff or food stuff is exposed for a certain amount of time, uh, uh, hot stuff, uh, or even hot stuff. So, uh, so it has to stay at that temperature, or they have to transfer it to the refrigerator. So they don't want anything to stay, uh, or uh, bring, it, bring, bring that food stuff to a temperature where it would, you know, it would become a conducive media for uh, pathogens to grow. So that is what they're looking for. So that when we talk about holding time, uh, I, like I said, I don't remember the exact uh, numbers of the temperature because I don't know. It's something that you can easily get just by doing a quick Google search on any other department or the CDC or the um, I'll also comment that there are a number of things uh, that they will do um, that are not on this form uh, because uh, uh, between our uh, 
uh, it was clear that there was no way to tell, apparently or otherwise, whether they were doing it. And it wasn't likely to be part of any final wrap up. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, uh, one of the things that uh, they're supposed to do is look at the ceilings and floors. Well, you know, <laughs> they're not going to go around like this looking at the ceiling, uh, but when they go in the room, uh, they glance and see that there's no problem with the ceiling. Uh, so it would be incorrect to say they haven't done it or for you to guess whether in fact it registered in their brain or not. Uh, so that kind of thing we've simply taken off the list where the only way to tell period was with the mind reading. Um, uh, so uh, uh, this isn't an all-inclusive list of what they do. It's a list of things that either would occur often enough uh, so that we expect it will come up uh, in the report or in the comments, uh, or that there may be some capacity for you to understand what it did. That we may take some of the things off if it will find that there really isn't any way to tell that, and it's not coming up in the reports anyway, uh, so it's just cluttering the form, and uh, uh, we'll take those off if that's what we see. Okay, um, so wrapping up with this section, also um, we asked about tobacco and clean air. Um, I went to a bowling alley and uh, my sanitarian I, you know, was just looking around and saw a guy smoking while he was loading the pins and so commented on it. And this just, uh, the story brings up um, an interesting point that I'll share. Um, it's just that the um, registered sanitarian brought this up with the person in charge and was like, tell your employee to stop smoking. And his initial reaction was, oh, no, no, he's not smoking. And, and we turned around and um, the sanitarian kept doing what he was doing and he whispered to me like, this is, he's, he's lying, it smells like smoke in here. And so it was something he had to address at the end. But so you definitely will notice if a sanitarian calls something out that the person in charge, even though it's very apparent that there's someone smoking, you smell it, like, you know, that um, they might try and wipe it off. So that was just an interesting thing that I observed. Um, and then lastly, um, spoiled or bad food that needs to be discarded, that'll be pretty apparent. Um, if the person in charge um, has to throw it out. Um, so let's see. Um, lastly, a little bit more content. So this more occurs after the inspection when the person in charge is discussing um, the results with the sanitarian. So whether the sanitarian gave clear feedback and assessment on the inspection, um, whether a, an improvement plan was discussed, so how to go about making some scenario better. Um, the sanitarian you know, confirmed understanding, said, do you understand what I'm asking you? Um, uh, offers education on how to, you know, what kind of um, um, procedures might be better to have proper cooling and different types um, of ways you can um, have the food properly stored. And um, lastly, listing questions, you know, not just filling the information and then saying, okay, we're done, but saying, you know, please ask me, you know, how to, um, if you have any other questions. Um, so this brings us uh, to the violation section. Um, and when I was going through um, my my places, you know, I saw things that I definitely wasn't that I loved. The floor is a little gross, but by the end of it, my sanitarian was like, "Oh yeah, this person has this place has six violations," like, you know, and that was um, kind of shocking for me because you know, me going through it on my first round, I definitely wouldn't have seen that. Um, but this is the point where. Um, at the end, they will either on electronically or um, on a sheet of paper write up um, their comments and their notes. Um, like Dr. Frank mentioned, this is public information, so hopefully we'll be able to get um, have access to it at the end. Um, but this is where, um, for example, the um, if there was a violation, uh, our actual number of um, citations given. So this could be um, this is the area where you'd really be able to t get this number because. Um, one of the things we did um, talk about, though, is this is a question where you won't necessarily, if they don't say it out loud, you're not going to know because they're just going to be typing it along. And if you don't want to be like leaning over their shoulder while they're doing it, um, uh, this might be an area where you can just say how many violations were given. Um, that be the question. And then hopefully um, when we get the reports, you can see exactly what was cited. Um, that way. And also, um, there's, you know, we also asked about verbal warnings because um, my sanitarian gave a bunch of verbal warnings as well. Some things that were minor, um, just trying to keep um, things that he just said, you know, make sure you do this now and, um, you know, put a label on that. Very minor things that he could have written a violation for but didn't. So um, those you should be able to observe because 
it'll just be, you know, do it's kind of like a do this kind of thing. Um, and then we also ask um, questions whether the person in charge questions the sanitarian's judgment, knowledge, fairness, and authority. And uh, that definitely comes up, um, believe it or not, because um, people who own these restaurants are very, you know, passionate about. They've, you know, built this up from the ground. And it's hard having a registered sanitarian come in and say, you know, this, 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 and this is wrong. Um, and depending on the age, between if you know the person in charge is way older and you have a young sanitarian, that might come into play, or gender um, might definitely impact um, the interactions between the two. Um, so we ask you to comment um, uh, on these different areas as well. Um, the explicit, that's not whether you question yeah. sanitarian yeah. judgment, that's what EIC verbally is there a way where you can indicate if the uh, PIC had like some mitigating circumstance for the violation? Like, uh, not being more, like if the, there's standing water in a refrigerator unit and they said, oh yeah, yeah, we saw that at the beginning of the day and it's the AC unit that's leaking and we already got a work order and by in three hours they'll have it fixed. Is there a place where you can say, hey, they're actually <laughs> no, nope, there, there you go. Um, but this is really great comments because we just things that you know or we didn't catch the first time. Um, um, and so just uh, last couple of section um, additional issues. So whether a lot of uh, at least the CCB sanitarians use an electronic tablet. However, some are still using paper. Um, this is another time where we do ask a question whether the paper copy is entered electronically. Um, Generally, you can, if you know, this might be some a question where you have to ask them. And, but then, you know, if you ask once for your local health department, it's generally going to be a pretty, well, you know, either they all do or they don't, most likely. Um, or at least you can keep that um, same for the each sanitarian. Um, so you should only have to ask that once. But that's a question you might not know unless you ask them. Um, let's see. And then just engagement and cooperativity, like you know, just being observing and seeing how you feel, you know, your own instincts, you know, is it a comfortable environment, was it a pleasant um, conversation between the two. Um, I know Porva definitely had um, more, uh, uh, how, how do I put it nice, it just... Um,
And then um, one of our other questions, which was adapted from medicine, is the hand on the doorknob syndrome. So when you're at a doctor and you're talking to them and they go to leave their hands on the doorknob and you just you get that question that you just have to ask them, which prolongs the visit. We applied that here, and so as the sanitarian, you know, after they've completed everything and is walking out, does the person in charge butt in and say, oh, you know, extending the visit by some means. So um, that's what this question um, refers to and whether it happens or not. Um, and then, you know, the, just the checkout process, which is inclusive of um, the sanitarian wrapping things up with the person in charge and um, going over the final um, results. Um, the last also page has qualitative observations. So, um, you know, is the consumer area new um, or old, equipment looking new or old? Um, as well as we ask you to comment on the atmosphere of the food service establishment. So whether it's chaotic, busy, organized, quiet, um, you know, feel free to take notes on what you observe and um, things that you find striking, um, as well as um, the cleanliness. Um, a lot of kitchens, you know, you'll be surprised in these restaurants, these very chain restaurants where it actually looks pretty dirty and um, is not the most pleasant thing in the world, even though it's a very popular restaurant. So just um, feel free to write down um, comments. And um, we also asked you, after observing this inspection, how comfortable would you be eating um, at this place after seeing the behind the scenes, so to speak. Um, and then the field notes section. You will have more room um, than is given to you here, but this really um, note observations that you make consistently that should be added, just as a reminder, and then as well record additional observations that you find striking or just comments about the day um, that just really stood out to you that you think should feel be included. Um, and so just, yes. Um, this is a little thing, but the consumer area and the uh, equipment in the kitchen are very new or old. Do you have sort of a subjective question or subjective issue? I, and I do agree with that because when you think about it, it's like, well, there can be a definitely, it, it could just look, you know, not old, but just, you know, used. Um, I definitely, w we haven't examined this in a while, but I definitely think this should be. We'll, we'll look at that. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that um, uh, we can uh, use some descriptors that would help uh, uh, fill that out so that uh, they didn't have to wait. can think of any good descriptors that make it more accurate and more likely that two people would view it the same way. Yeah, and, uh, some of them might be obvious, but in, you know, my operation of something that was old. Right. I mean, and old and in good shape is also different than old and in good graphic. Uh, but so, uh, too, right. How do we know what's industrial? Right. So, so we'll, we'll talk about that. Thanks for bringing it up. Yeah. Uh, with a couple of these questions on your experience, like the hand on the doorknob syndrome, for instance, do we need to record like what they're asking if it's from mommy to visit? Um, or, for instance, also on the one where it's asking if one of them had their voice raised in anger, like, if we know why they were angry or what they were like upset about, like we need to know. I mean, it, it it doesn't hurt. I mean, it, I mean, we definitely want more information than less. Um, more information is always better than less information. Uh, we will never criticize you for giving us too much information. Yeah. Yeah. So if you you know if you're moving, it'd be great if you just any you know anything uh, about any more. Yeah. <laughs> something that will be discussed um, later, I know, is just what to do in the case of a situation. Yeah. 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 I think that a situation like that might arise, but actually before entering the restaurant, um, sanitary and actually said I'm going to ask PIC if it's okay for you to come with me. Uh, whereas with the first two restaurants that I went with him, he did really, you know, I mean, he did ask, but it was like, I mean, you could really make out from
only time that uh, uh, the environmental health people have expressed to me that they felt uh, their safety in question is actually the enforcement of the Clean Air and the Air Act. Uh, uh, yeah, there is uh, such anger on the part of some establishments and some patrons uh, that there have been times that they felt unsafe. The point of the study isn't pretty to shadow those things, but uh, the same sanitarium may be doing uh, food service inspections and uh, following up a tobacco complaint on the same day. Uh, uh, it's up to you whether you follow them on those, whether you shadow them on things that were not explicitly observing them for. There's no form for you to fill out for that. It would just give you personal based on experience with the quite a variety of, uh, of issues that the uh, sanitarians are confronted with. Uh, uh, the same thing would apply there. If you have any questions about personal safety, just don't do it or remove yourself uh, uh, from the situation at the point in which uh, you uh, feel uh, less than safe. Well, we're going to cover that in more detail. Okay. Um, okay, so that brought us through the observational protocol. Um, just again, some key points. So we really try to do the layout of it as sequentially as possible, but as you've now seen after going through the whole thing, you might be flip-flopping, but as you become more comfortable using the form and where the items are, it should kind of become second nature, at least it did for us after our fourth or fifth inspection. Um, and uh, while we hope that most of these questions you can answer from just observation, stuff like the risk categories or whether the paper, whether the inspection sheet is being entered um, electronically, you may have to ask. So we do keep that in mind. Um, and then as I remember mentioning in the beginning, just expect a variation in time for each inspection. So, um, you know, gas stations can be really quick. Stuff where there's not a lot of food on the table can, you know, it's very quick uh, versus a grocery store, which can take many, many hours. Um, so just um, uh, understand that as well. And, uh, you know, Doing the observational methodology, I've actually um, done a type of study in the emergency department where I was following a physician and I was supposed to be completely invisible. And it's just hard when you have someone right there not to talk to them. But um, so I'm, so you may encounter that as well with those sanitarians talking to you and trying to explain stuff to you. But do remind them that you are doing this for research and not as a student trying to understand what's going on and you want to be as in the background and invisible as possible, um, just to try and keep things as accurate as possible. Um, and so any other questions on the observational protocol before we go flying through the post inspection because I know I'm past time. Um, so the last um, page in your um, folder will be the post inspection interview and uh, hopefully this is something that can be conducted in the car um, uh, from you know your first uh, one place to the other um, where we ask you to put the end time of the inspection, which actually please, that's something to um, note you should do right the moment the uh, registered sanitarian leaves the food service establishment. Um, so make sure to uh, keep that in mind. Um, but then we have these list of questions asking the technical difficulty of the inspection for the sanitarian. Um, and we also, we have um, a Likert scale, but also leave room for you to um, detail on whether it was easy or hard or just for them to really give you a more qualitative response. Um, how difficult were the interpersonal interactions, how satisfied were you with what you accomplished today, um, and perception of time with the PIC, um, et cetera. And so uh, this is uh, definitely a really important component, but you will get a little bit more exposure to in the af after this when we do the um, uh, mock run through. So um, these are just the questions up here, but um, I know we went through this kind of quickly because we want to move along. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we are going to have more experience uh, uh, with it um, uh, if we actually play with it uh, and look at a, uh, an inspection. Um, I did want to comment that the post inspection interview is not intended uh, to help you fill out your observational form. That would be too much bias because if you ask someone, uh, you know, did you do this or not? Um, and said, well, I know I'm supposed to have done that, uh, you're likely to get the, the even more biased response. So um, that's not the purpose of the post-inspection interview. 
their form can help clarify, uh, but uh, uh, discussion afterwards should be uh, completed just on the uh, post inspection interview form. It shouldn't influence uh, your, uh, your response to uh, the observational form unless something they said reminds you of something that you did see but had forgotten until it came up uh, during the post inspection interview. So if you can in independently confirm it, and that causes you to change something on your observational form, no problem, but don't ask them questions in order to change your form. Clear? These are all quick things. Uh, and I could have to talk about what Dr. Frank just said. Uh, keep questions to the minimum, uh, except when you're doing the pre-inspection and the post-inspection. And also, please go through the pre-inspection and the post-inspection in front of the manager or the PSC or any of the other employees of the restaurant. Because you're asking three sensitive questions. For this, this is a hard thing for us not. You, you probably don't want to be asking that question in front of the PSC. Uh, in fact, if you don't have time to do the uh, inspection, either before or after, you're better off not doing it than trying to do it in a situation that uh, could be overheard or could make the sanitarium uncomfortable. Um, uh, so I'd rather have it missing data uh, than uh, have either you, the sanitarian, or uh, someone in the restaurant feel uncomfortable about uh, the discussion you have for the pre or post interview. 